Hi, I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd and today I want to share with you my Sega Genesis story all about my childhood and adulthood dealing with the Sega Genesis. I'm sure some of you have a Sega Genesis story as well, so feel free to share your story in the comments. This video is sponsored by the Sega Genesis Classics Collection available on PS4 and Xbox One. Hmm, a Sega Genesis video that I'm making that's sponsored by Sega Genesis Game. How convenient and not planned at all. Hashtag sponsor. Thank you Sega for giving me a copy of the game on PS4. 50 Sega Genesis games from your childhood all in one package. You got Sonic, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, Toe Jam and Earl, Alex Kidd, Kid Chameleon, Vector Man, Rystar, Decap Attack, Gunstar Heroes. And it has special features like a 90s style bedroom menu, rewind features in case you mess up. You can put all these kind of filters on the game to give it that old school CRT or arcade screen feel and you can mirror mode all of the games you can turn all the games on the flip side and play them in a different direction so if you're interested in getting this game I have a link in the description below feel free to click that link to get all the details about the Sega Genesis classic collection for PS4 and Xbox one I played it during a twitch stream it was actually one of my most fun and biggest twitch streams I've ever had I announced it on YouTube and a lot of you came over and checked it out this is also a nice reminder that I do have a twitch channel and I've been twitching a lot so feel free to follow me on twitch I'd really appreciate that but it was cool to have that twitch stream because all the people that were in the chat room were talking about these games and like some of them had the games and they were talking about how they were remembering their nostalgic feels and their childhoods of playing these games for the first time when they owned a Sega Genesis as a kid. And that was interesting to me because I didn't own a Sega Genesis as a kid. I loved Sega Genesis, but I never got to have one when I was a child when the game system actually came out because my parents wouldn't let me have one. I was at least able to convince them to let me get a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo, but to then try to add Sega Genesis to that, they were like, no, too many consoles, too many consoles. First time I ever actually got to play a Sega Genesis, get your tissues and tears ready, um, was at Toys R Us. If you were a 90s kid, you knew that Toys R Us was the place to go to check out the new video games. They would have that wall with all the video games the boxes would be flat and they would have them in those plastic containers. You could flip them up so you could see the front and the back of the box and they had those little cards or a little piece of paper that you would take out and take to the register and buy and then you would go to that little fort that they had where like there was a guy behind glass and like, give me your card and you give him that little slip of paper and then he would find the game and give it to you. You would go there to see all those games on the wall and you would go there because they would have displays of all the different consoles that you could just play them. So I got to play Columns, I got to play Sonic 1, Sonic 2. I played those at Toys R Us at the Genesis display because that was my way of being able to play Genesis and every time I would do it, I'd be like, Mom, Dad, really would like that Genesis? And they're like, you already have a game console, Andre. You can't have another one. Well, now I have all the consoles, Mom and Dad. Look at me now. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> I am a man child. Look at me now. Luckily, a couple of games that are on this collection were also arcade games, so I got to play those. So Altered Beast, I played that in the arcades, and also Golden Axe, I played in the arcades. That's why I love that little filter feature that you can do on this Genesis Classic Collection, because I played Golden Axe, and I put a big filter on it where it almost looked like the old arcade monitors I used to play that game on. And the other way to play Genesis games, uh, you make friends. Friends who have other consoles different from yours. I had a Genesis friend, I had a Turbo Graphics friend, I had a PlayStation friend. <laughs> I think I might even had a 3DO friend or a CDI friend, it's possible. But that's what you did. They would come to your place and play your games that they didn't have or the consoles that they didn't have and you would go to their place and you would play the games and consoles that they had that you didn't have. Whenever I would hang out with them, we'd play some Sonics, we'd play some Streets of Rages. That was always fun to do because that's multiplayer, good times. And then uh, Madden. I have football friends. We had to have Madden. Then there was also the Sega Genesis version of Aladdin, which is kind of a bummer because that was a really good game and you can't get that, I guess, in these collections because of the license from Disney. And then for some reason, Tasmania. That was also a game I remember a couple of my Genesis friends having. Tasmania was a big deal back then. I know everyone's all Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and Freakazoid and Pinky the Brain. And I know Tasmania is not a Steven Spielberg Presents Warner Brothers cartoon, but it was still around at the same time. Had a lot of same voice actors, same writers, same fun. Just saying, give Tasmania some love. He put the Taz in Tasmania, down in Tasmania, come to Tasmania, we mean you. The sun's always yellow and rain all shine. Tossing and turning and starts to spin like a Tasmanian devil and its closest kin, down in Tasmania. Okay, I'm getting a little off track right now. Even though I didn't own a Genesis, Genesis was still something that everyone knew about because you had the consoles, you had the commercials. 
Genesis had those crazy commercials. Genesis does! Or the people just yelling, Sega! And then Genesis, of course, was part of the big console war, the true console war. Everyone tries to make a console war nowadays, but back then, the Genesis Super Nintendo, that was a war. And Genesis did not play around with those commercials. Talking smack, Genesis does with Nintendo, don't. Blast processing. Blast processing, y'all. Blast processing right there. Woo! You grew up with that even if you didn't own the console and that's how I felt. And then I also watched the Sonic cartoon, so that was something too. So Genesis was really a part of my life a lot. It just wasn't in my home. <laughs> That was only the missing piece. I knew everything about Genesis except for actually having the Genesis. I did eventually own my own Sega Genesis console when I was an adult. I bought like an old one at a retro game store and I had it for a little bit, got the usuals, got the classics, uh, but then I sold it when I moved to LA because I needed money to move and I was like, oh, Genesis, these things are cheap. No one buys these consoles and games. I'll just sell them, move to LA, and when I get some money again, I'll just buy them right back. Not realizing that during my trip, uh, the whole collector's craze would tune in and go crazy. And then all those consoles and games that I bought for like five bucks uh, were now 50 and 100. I was ahead of the curve and didn't even know it. So that is why I am glad that eventually on the Xbox 360 they released this thing, Sonic's Genesis Classic Collection, and now we've got the Classic Collection on PS4 and Xbox One. And even though I'm playing a lot of these games new today, just the look and the feel and the sound and the controls of them still give me that nostalgic classic feel as if I were playing them back in the 90s. Oh dude, I am... Oh my gosh, this is already amazing. Oh my gosh, I love everything about this. Gunstar Heroes, I love this game. I never played it as a kid, hadn't played it before in other variations, because I know it got released a couple times, but I got to play it in this collection. And oh my God, this run and gun shooter is so cool. I just could just play this game alone for the price of admission. I've learned a lot about Genesis now playing these games. Some new things I didn't know about them or didn't realize about them. For example, uh, Genesis games are hard like really hard. I'm not saying that the other consoles didn't give me a challenge, but oh my gosh, for a 16-bit console, they are able to put a lot of enemies and projectiles and things to kill you on the screen at one time. And it does not slow down at all for you. It just goes to show you the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit, I guess. They were like, oh, we got more bits? That means more enemies to kill you and making this game harder for you. Thanks, Sega. And I like a challenge. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Here's the other crazy thing. There's some Genesis games particularly in this collection, where you only get one life. So it's very hard and you only get one life. Comic Zone is a really cool looking game. You're literally zapped inside of a comic book and you're jumping through different comic book panels, fighting bad guys. I had a blast with it, but I died while I was playing the game. I was like, okay, how many lives I got left? And the game was like, nope, that's it. You're done, game over. Sega, Sega. I'm like, wait, 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 whoa. So you gotta have that strategy. You gotta know how to play these games. And I'm sure if I was a kid with a Sega, I would have tried over and over again and eventually mastered that thing. Sega mastered that thing. <laughs> kind of like frustrates me, but at the same time, I kind of appreciate that. Or you have a game like Alien Soldier, which is not only hard, but also decides it wants to give you like 10 minutes of backstory. This game has the longest prologue I've ever seen. It was great to read, but man, I was like, this is a novel. It made sure that you got a good deal of your $50 when you bought these games. They're like, you're gonna play this game a lot. We'll make sure of it. Sega Genesis got some bump and sound. Some of these games got some amazing, wonderful, kick butt soundtracks. I mean, just like, oh shoot, I'm feeling this song. Watch your back, attack, attack. Cut no slack, attack, attack. Chuck the head, Chuck the head. Fight the living and the dead. And you get to play them on newer consoles and you're playing them on newer televisions with better sound. It even helps to accentuate those soundtracks a little bit more. So I was really jamming to a lot of that music. Oh my gosh, yes, 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 yes. Kid Chameleon, you were just so cool. Genesis games are very 90s. Man, you will play a game like Kid Chameleon and you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a 90s game. Or even the Streets of Rage games, which I love the Streets of Rage games. Classic beat em up, going down the street, knocking people out, it's great. That being said, it's a very 90s game. I mean, I'm a kid with roller skates on. Beating people up with roller skates, flipping on the back of their heads, knocking them out with roller skates. 
That's 90, yo. And some of these Genesis games are just weird. Like, in a really good way, but just out there. What the hell is Decap Attack? So, you're like a mummy type creature and you can shoot like from your chest to knock people out, but then you can also pick up a skeleton head and put it on top of your body, and then you can throw that out at, at enemies. And then nothing gets weirder than Dynamite Eddie. So you're a character who can like throw his head and it looks like you're actually on like a stage, like a play uh, or something like that. You're fighting like cats that are running around. There's this giant thing that comes from the sky that you have to fight while they're playing the Nutcracker Suite in the background. Oh, what happened to the cat? Who did the, oh my gosh, what is this? So Genesis games are very 90s and Genesis games can be very weird and then you get a game like Toe Jam and Earl which is very 90s and very weird. Toe Jam and Earl should have been a Nick too. Like you watch that game, particularly the cutscenes, I'm like, how is this not a 90s Nickelodeon show? Like it literally should have been like, coming up next to Nickelodeon, Doug, Rugrats, Ren and Stippy, Rocko's Modern Life, Cat Dog, and Toe Jam and Earl. Does it not sound like it fits? But then for every extreme and 90s game that Sega Genesis has, they also had like some sweet cute Games. Like, look at Rystar, he's a little star and he grabs things and he's just running around all cute and stuff. Look at Flicky, he's got like a little bird and he's picking up tiny birds and he's fighting little cats. With the first party Genesis titles, you can really get this sense of like, this is totally Sega. This is totally their style, their characters, their ways of presenting themselves as the new video game console on the block back then or, or the, the direct competitor to the, to the king and I think that was really cool. So that was my Sega Genesis story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to tell me what your favorite Genesis games are, I would love to hear it. And if there's any games that you would like to see me play on future Twitch streams, always feel free to suggest those as well. You can tweet those to me at Black Nerd and of course check me out on Twitch. If you like what I do, subscribe. If you've already subscribed, unsubscribe and resubscribe again. Algorithms. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000 and Genesis does what Andre don't because Andre can't beat some of the Genesis games and he only has one life and he can't somehow defeat it, but he's gonna keep trying because he just loves the game so much. Thank you, bye.